soon as we get this unloaded, we'll be parking in place. Catch you screw in the branches. branches on the top once you've gotten the uh, top part of the framework set together. Yeah. <laughs> if you have room, it's easier just to transport the top unit as one. That way you don't have to put it together. Uh, it's all put together with wing nuts and bolts that go through these sockets. Um, 25 minutes and counting. Okay. We need to lay it back. It goes all the way back. Oh. Just lay it down. Oh, yeah. So we can. Even the branches? Yep. Yeah. Holes have letters that match them up together. For instance, um, this one's labeled D, and the socket is labeled D. How useful. Otherwise, it would be impossible to put together. Three days. Okay, now if somebody could get in back, I'm gonna lift the. No, no, no. no. <laughs> A little pressure. I understand that when they first built, when they took down the lot to build the tree of the city, uh, they had that chunk of the tree decided that it would be probably the historic, but one of our former members who has had now deceased Charles Stephenson, he did some research and was told that it was a historic tree. Apparently, they talked to somebody at the University of Washington, and that was it until just this past year when we decided to go to our pastor. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Which is representing plant amnesty. Hasn't it been taught? No. Oh, all right. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not an exact, it's a... From Seattle Street. This day is a cause for celebration since it is the dedication of Seattle's first heritage tree. We are here to honor the Japanese umbrella pine behind you. It is not a large tree. It's the same size as countless Lawson cypress trees that abound in Seattle. And it sits in a less than illustrious surroundings and asphalt parking lot. As the congregation already knows, and as visitors today no doubt discovered, parking is hard to find hereabouts. So it was an inevitable that someone would suggest the tree's removal to create one more precious parking spot. When people grow up, they often see only the trouble that it is to have a tree, raking leaves, buckling parking lots, maybe an interrupted view, or when the lights go out during a storm. The great English poet William Blake said, the tree which moves some to tears of joy is in the eyes of others a green thing that stands in the way. But luckily, some people here had second thoughts. They looked a little closer at the tree and wondered it might be special. And indeed it was and is. As far as trees go, the tree behind you is a relative giant for its species in Seattle. I can think of only three other Japanese umbrella pines that I have seen in Seattle, and the biggest one is about the size of a large rhododendron. This is how the tree looked when it was planted 90 years ago. Wow. 29.95 at Moldax. <laughs> It is not a pine, actually, it's a Skyadopity. Considered rare today, imagine how rare it was when it was planted in the first years of the new centennial in 1900. The assessor's records show that a house was built on this lot in 1900. In 1937, it was owned by Conteel Israel, who perhaps had the green thumb that planted it. In 1956, a picture shows the house with the tree more than half its current size. In 1966, the Curry Temple bought the house and the lot and retained it as a Sunday school. Sometime after that, the house was torn down, the current structure built, and the asphalt lot created. At that critical point, some unknown person decided to save the tree. Did they know it was rare? Or did they simply have a soft spot for green and growing things? I don't know. But I know that whatever the reason, they shared our appreciation for trees. Then about a year ago, I got a call from Katie Wilson. Where are you, Katie? <laughs> Asking if Plant Amnesty could help preserve this tree. She and Charles Akers, Charles, We're instrumental in seeing that this tree be known and protected as the special tree it is. The congregation was enthusiastic. It turned out that Plant Amnesty, an organization to promote better care of trees, had just decided to start a heritage tree program. As most tree lovers in Seattle already know, current laws only protect street trees and then only some street trees, and even these laws are inadequate and rarely enforced. No heritage tree program exists to recognize private trees such as this one. It also just happened that about a month ago, the city, under the guidance of council member Jan Drago, come up from behind Marla. responded to the public request for help in protecting our tree canopy. She is here today to help us dedicate this tree. Jan is taking, taking on the torch 
and by suggesting the tree preservation be included in the city's comprehensive plan. The tree was recently pruned by volunteer arborist Bruce Trelsad, volunteers Diane Sukavati and Brent Schmidt. Diane, Brent? They built the pedestal, which is back by the tree, and they dressed it up with a new coat of mulch. The author of Trees of Seattle, Arthur Lee Jacobson. Arthur? Oh, Arthur. Oh, there he is. He wrote the words of the plaque, which is being unveiled now by the young boy next to the tree, and the pop can. Go ahead, unveil it. Go ahead, unveil it. <laughs> Thea and Eric Maia, who built Marla the Maple, seen here to help us celebrate the occasion. So again, I want to thank all involved, and especially Katie Wilson, for continuing the long line of tree protectors and tree appreciators that saved this tree for this day. They know that everything worth doing and everything worth having, your car, your cat, your kid, your community, it will all take some extra care and some sacrifice. But they know, as we do, that it's well worth it. And I would also like to present this framed copy of the plaque, which also contains the tree's history, to the trustee board president, Charles Akers. Charles, would you like to say a few words? First, give an honor to God, to the dignitaries, the officers, the members, and Christian friends of the Curry Temple family. It's indeed a pleasure for me to be here because I was one of the instigators of saving the tree. We had a member, Charles R. Stevenson, at one time, who worked for the city of Seattle, who is deceased. And he told us this is a historical tree. So he did a little research on it, but in the meantime, he passed away. And as you know, in the CME Church, ministers are only signed for one year. And as that minister left, a new minister come in, they saw the need for one more parking spot. So in the official board, they were voting to cut the tree down to get one more parking spot. I suggested to them that as a historical tree, we should keep it. Sister Katie Wilson, in turn, volunteered to do the research. So this is why the program is here today. And I would like to thank all the participants who participated in it. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. And Council Member Dan Drago. Thank you. Well, thanks for inviting me here today. I really do appreciate it. And I bring the thanks from the city of Seattle, and that means the mayor, the council, and all of Seattle citizens to um, Charles and Katie, first of all, for asking the question. And sometimes just asking the question is the big step. And certainly to Kate's um, cat turnball of plant amnesty. Um, it is, this is a pretty historic day. It is the beginning. This is the first voluntary heritage tree that is being dedicated. Um, a, a few weeks ago, a number of us were over on, at Magnolia, where a national organization, um, Historic and Famous Trees, recognized the Magnolia Madrones. And that was, I think, the first for that organization to recognize a tree in this area. And, but it's the beginning of educating more and more people. And why don't you, if there's anybody that didn't see this article in today's paper, hasn't had a chance to read it yet, that's great because that starts to spread the word as well, that we do have important trees in this city and we need to do something about, about those trees. So the first step that we took as on, um, 
cast mentioned was in our comprehensive plan, and I do want to give credit to Margaret Pageler, who worked on this amendment, but to encourage the urban tree canopy. And I know there are some people that are disappointed that we weren't able to kind of do this faster than uh, two years, but in the scheme of things, I found out two years in the city is actually pretty fast, having worked on a number of big issues. So that's the first step. But now, speaking of big issues, I'm about to offload a couple of issues that I've been working on for the past couple of years. Tomorrow we'll be passing uh, taxi reform in the city, and we're working hard on major institutions, and that'll be another couple of weeks. And really what that says is that it frees my staff up to spend more time on some of the other issues that, that I care about and that I would like to see develop. So I have asked my staff member, Dan McGrady, to work with Liz Ellis, and we need to say thank you to Liz Ellis, our, our city tree lady right over here. Liz, give away. To work with Liz Ellis and our arborist, Jerry, to, and with Plant Amnesty, to develop this voluntary recognition program and the protection plan, and that shouldn't take two years. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do that much sooner. But for the people that were at Magnolia, I shared a little bit of my background on time visits therapy and do real things. And one of the things that we like to do is tree planting. And we do those periodically throughout the year. And next Saturday, we're going to be in West Seattle planting trees. So, and I would like to just say a word to the, the kids that are here today. There's a role for all of you. some Martinelli's here, and you can pretend that you have some Martinelli's. Plant Amnesty's budget ran out after the plaque. Okay. 